just you, me, and the odds. We stuck together, we two peas in a pod. So quick, guys, before I get started, please hit the subscribe button. It would help me out a lot. Um, if you do enjoy this video, if it does help you out, uh, please help me out in return. I'd appreciate that. Welcome, Raiders, to another Raid Shadow Legends video by Clam Boss. Today, I'm super excited. We're going to be doing another video on Stone Skin. I had another one called Is Duchess in Stone Skin a Problem? And this one is about the effects of Provoke with Stone Skin. Of course, as you know, when you provoke somebody, they're going to attack you. Some of the champions, like Umbral Enchantress, have something to mitigate that. Um, she puts Unkillable on herself, so um, she does get knocked down to zero health. But then after that, um, the Unkillable is there to protect her. Um, Molly here has Reflect Damage, so it actually causes damage to the other opponents as opposed to protecting her. Um, she does have one of the strongest provokes in the game because sometimes it goes on for two turns instead of one. And then also that Reflect Damage, of course, is great. She's also got another kind of secret skill, too, that a lot of people didn't realize she had, which is anytime she gets hit, she pushes herself and her allies turn meter up. So she can help you get to go next uh, whenever you're going against, like, a Hegemon or something like that. The problem is if it's a nuke Hegemon, he might just take her down to zero in the process. You'll still get to go, but if the Hegemon's strong enough, he might nuke your team. What it's also going to do is when she gets people to attack her with their A1, um, it's not going to do any damage to her. The best part about this is it's not just an arena thing. Um, this is actually going to be great for dungeons as well. So at least for the dungeon waves, it's only going to be good against one boss, or I should say she's only good against one boss, which is Magma Dragon. Now the stats that I gave her are 51,000, almost 52,000 health. Um, the attack isn't that important, 1,800, um, 3,700 defense, 228 speed. I'd like to see that a lot higher. The longer we farm Hydra, um, some people already have much better gear than this. I've got some good stuff on my Duchess. I didn't want to really take it off of her because she's such a, a linchpin uh, for me. But um, I've only got her at 228 speed. So you might see people cut in you know, here and there uh, in the arena because of it. Um, but that's you know okay for now. Um, this is more to showcase what we can do with it as opposed to like me going in and winning every arena battle. Um, she does not have much crit rate right now. Um, her resist is only 272. Nothing big there. And then I've got her at 482 accuracy. I'd like to see that higher as well. Um, if I could get that into the, you know, 500s, uh, even the 600s, that would be great. People are building some pretty high resistance teams these days. So the good news is her passive rowdy crowd um you don't need accuracy for this and you don't have to beat anybody's resist if they hit you um anytime they hit you it fills the turn meters of all allies by 15 percent um that can be a lot in the arena um it can even be a lot in dungeons as well so you take a couple hits and all of a sudden you cut in so that can be really really helpful let's take a look at the rest of her skills real quick the A1 really means nothing. Damage increased by 50% if targets are under an HP burn debuff. Um, places a Provoke debuff on all enemies for one turn. Has 50% chance of placing Provoke for two turns instead. That's huge. If you can Provoke somebody for two turns and you can stay alive through that, um, that is two entire turns that you've locked out that champion. So that's huge. Um, and then places a 30% Reflect Damage buff on this champion for two turns. So while your turn meter is getting boosted, they're actually taking damage. Then one of the other reasons it's great to have her in this as kind of a fail safe, especially in an Arbiter team, um, she revives an ally with 50% HP, fills their turn meter by 50% and places block damage debuff on that ally for one turn. So um, they do happen to not nuke everybody down, but she's wearing stone skin. She can pick up Arbiter. Arbiter can pick up your other two champions. And you're, you know, you're back in the action. And what did I put her in? Um, really nothing special here. Um, yes, she's in one reaction accessory. Um, I just didn't find a better accessory. She doesn't really need it when she's wearing stone skin. Um, there might be some champions that strip and hit at the same time. In that case, it's nice that she's wearing it. Um, because stone, can, stone skin can be stripped at about a 50% rate. Or at exactly a 50% rate. And then I've got her in six pieces of stone skin. Just to go over what Stone Skin does again, just to go over what Stone Skin does again, um, 
once you get her up to a six piece set, she gets all of these bonuses. So 8% HP, 40% or 40 resistance, 15% defense, um, another 15% defense. So a total of 30% defense. And then also give stone skin buff for two turns at the start of a round. Um, again, 50% chance of blocking removals or steals. The other thing stone skin does, um, they cannot place debuffs on you. So they can't put decreased defense on her. They, they can't provoke her. They can't uh, stun her, sleep her, anything like that. Um, if they strip it off, then she'll be like she's wearing anything else. So once that wears off, she'll be like any other champion out there. But both in dungeons and also... Sorry, it's like lightning. There's like a storm hail going on outside. If you can hear anything, that's what it is. So if the stone skin wears off, she'll be like any other champion. But two turns can be huge, both in arena and dungeons. Uh, even one turn of provoke uh, can make a huge difference in both of those cases. So um, with this gear on, provoke becomes the same as stun. Um, as long as you're not fighting a champion who can strip uh, stone skin on their A1. So Harvest Jack might be kind of a scary opponent. Uh, I think there's a few others out there that could do that too. But we're going to get into all that. I'll show you some Doom Tower. I'll show you some Arena. And then we'll kind of go over the Masteries after that. All right, so I actually have her in here with a Stone Skin Duchess right now as well. Um, what you're going to find, as long as she's fast enough, which she is, she's going to come in here. She's going to place that Provoke right away. Um, we missed it on one of them. Must have gotten three percented. Uh, we got uh, the the two two times on this champion here, um, and the rest of them it looks like we got a one time. Uh, so that's great. All right, we locked out both the astroliths, and then we locked out two of those back three girls. Um, unfortunately, we missed the one, but that's the way this game works. Uh, three percent's a bitch sometimes. Um, we are going to go ahead and show how this can help us clean up the mess. I'm going to attack the one that's not provoked first and takes her down. Um, this is level 44 of hard doom tower. Um, I'm not, I, I've been getting really distracted. I've actually missed several days of doom tower this time. There's just way too much to do in this game. I don't apologize for it. Um, you know, sometimes there's more important things in life. Sometimes there's more important things in life, like my wife and kid. And we're just going to kind of whittle these guys down. A couple of them got their turn. So Astrolith went and she went. Um, both of them, of course, did no damage. Uh, they attacked her and uh, they did no damage. So so now we are down to two left. One of them is still provoked. She's the one that we got the double provoke on and we're going to keep going after these guys now our last enemy of course um if this was a really tough round we would really focus on this but we're going to kind of like a1 until we uh until we whittle her down um that way you get all your all your best moves back for the next round so i'll just kind of showcase it that way so here we are. We've actually got a couple champions here that can be pretty tough. Um, in a normal scenario without the stone skin, when you provoke, Phoenix is not a great one to go up against. If he crits, um, he can double hit you. Uh, depending on the scenario, he can hit you twice. He can block revive, and he hits really hard on his A1. He's got one of the hardest uh, hitting A1s in the whole game. And then, uh, I forget this guy's name. Either way. Uh, he can hit really hard, I believe. Um, he might provoke too. I don't remember his skills right now. But um, these guys are going to be really good to be provoking. In this case, on 4 out of 5, this is great luck. On 4 out of 5 with a 50% chance, we ended up getting 2 provokes. Um, so the important part of having in a full set of stone skin is now that they're provoked, at least for one of those provokes, she's not going to take any damage. And we get to go in here. Uh, we take the one guy who's only got a single provoke and we get rid of him. Now you might not be able to down these waves as quickly. That's you know not a big deal. Who do I think? I think we want to take out the Phoenixes. 
Luckily, they are not the toughest to kill for Roto since they're green affinity. And then, yeah, pretty easy stuff. As long as they're provoked, <laughs> I don't even know, did they get a turn? But the nice part is when they are provoked, if they do attack her, they're actually, that's going to be boosting our turn meter up. So we're just going to get to go again, um, which is pretty great. Or at least get to go again sooner. I didn't get all the moves back this time, so we might be in a bit of trouble. The good news is she, oh, I do still get to provoke. I take it back. This time we got two out of the five got the double provoke. So we're going to try to take them out without um, having the decreased defense down. Oh, wow. All right. I'm not going to put decreased defense on them. And the reason why I kind of want them to attack us um, so we can see, well, I guess, I guess the stone skin's off of her. Man, this thunder outside is crazy. Just storms everywhere. All right, there, there's where it happened. She got attacked, boosted everyone else's turn meter. Now, Madam Saris got to cut in. These guys probably would have gotten to go, um, but because she was attacked, um, uh, she cut in. So that's, that's what you're hoping for with this. Um, in this case, they really weren't attacking until the stone skin was off, but it still worked anyway. So that's how it's going to work in Doom Tower. Um, obviously, she's a great champ all around. If one of our champions had gotten killed, she could have resurrected them, given them that block damage uh, buff. All right, so now we're up uh, near the top of gold five. Um, not the toughest teams. I'll start with this, and then um, I'll try to find some tougher teams too. Not knocking these guys. I'm sure they're they're great, but um, generally speaking... You don't see High Katoon up at this level. I'm guessing these guys either put in a defense to help them slide down a little bit, um, or it's some something to do with their arena fix. This might not be a real opponent here, but the idea is the same. We've got Provoke going on with everybody, and now um, we did miss, again, one of the defense downs that time. You seem to miss something almost every match because of that 3% chance. And then Lua, I've got a video on Lua and how good she is. Um, and uh, that's the other great part about having a second reviver on the team. Um, Lua's revive was blocked. And I believe it's because of this guy. Um, anyway, Lua's revive was blocked. And so therefore Molly was able to come in and lift her up instead. So... Now, the cool part is it doesn't have to be Molly. Uh, Molly's great. She's fantastic. But um, you can, yeah, let's just get some refresh going on here. This is interesting. I'm going to try this team. Um, I don't know if Valkyrie is going to screw things up. Because she helps them cut in. But we'll just auto here and see what happens. Uh, we strip with Madam Saris. We do our... Okay, that worked. All right, this should be a good team. We've got Seafy. We've got Arbiter. we got that Vogoth. All right. So because Vogoth's in here, I'm not trying to mess with... Um, I'm not... Because Vogoth was in here, I wasn't trying to mess with Lua going through. Um, she's fantastic, but um, AoE champs aren't the best against Vogoth, so. It's best to just take out the Revivers and then uh, take out the others. Now, if you haven't seen my video on Vogoth, uh, Sexy Tips, or sorry, Sexy Dating Tips by Vogoth, uh, please check that out. It's a lot of fun. Hey, baby! Meeting you is like a sacred shard. Tonight has a 6% chance to be legendary. 
Just you, me, and the odds. All right. So there we are. We were able to control um, Arbiter and Sifi with that uh, provoke. Actually, Arbiter didn't get provoked, but all right. Let's take a look at this Azazel. Um, see if he's got Gnarlhorn in Stone Skin. If he does, it's the same idea of what we're talking about here. It's really the only reason I want to fight him here is find out. They didn't. Okay. Um, Gnarlhorn is actually another champion you can do this with. He's a rare. He's easy to get, um, and you know he puts an AOE provoke on everybody. Normally, he has to take a whole nother turn to put unkillable on himself. Um, so by the time he does that, it's kind of like too late. Um, but the but other than that, he's basically doing the same concept. He's putting provoke out there, and if he was in stone skin, they'd be attacking him and doing no damage. So um, he'd be another champion you could do this with. In fact, you could have him at level 50. That wouldn't be a problem. Wow, almost the same team here. In fact, I could put Kanderfon in instead of Lua. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> oh, they're faster. But the good news is... I don't think it's going to matter. Every time they hit her, they're boosting our turn meter. And now we're going to get our chance. Why did she use that? Oh, okay. That was a counterattack. Perfect. All right. We're going to try this one with Rodos. Um, Lua is way too squishy for uh, Foley. But Rodos can usually get the job done. All right, so same concept there. You know, provoked everybody. Uh, Foley got to go because he, he washes off the provokes. But everybody else was provoked, so they didn't get to do their good skills. And when they did attack, they attacked our, uh, our wonderful Molly in Stone Skin. So... So we'll get down to the masteries. Um, yeah, basically Molly in stone skin is the same as Molly in immunity gear, except better. Immunity gear can be stripped uh, more easily and stone skin can't. So this is like super immunity gear. So without immunity gear, like when Hegemon attacks, she'll get her skills blocked and things like that. So we do want to keep it um, to where it's uh, you know difficult to do that. Also, um, this can't get stripped as easily as Immunity Gear can. Other than that, it's the same thing as Immunity Gear uh, with some added bonuses in there uh, with the defense and the resistance and stuff. So um, it's just better Immunity Gear. So her Masteries, kind of a shocker. I didn't even realize I hadn't finished her Masteries. Earlier today, I looked and I didn't have even the bottom row. So... I quickly farmed up 350 more scrolls, got her the accuracy. I used to use her in Arena all the time. Um, now I've got Sifi and two Rodoses and Kaimar and stuff. So, um, you know, my Arbiter is not my main lead. Um, I was using her today. She's still pretty fast, but she's not as fast as some of the Arbiters out there uh, because I've got all my speed gear on Sifi. So, um, but, you know, even, even today without it being like my best team by any stretch, um, you could still kind of see the effectiveness of it. You put, you know, Arbiter in your, in your best gear, you put Molly in your best, you know, accuracy, uh, uh, stone skin gear, you put, uh, you get her as fast as you can. Uh, hopefully she'd be fast enough to keep up with your Arbiter. Um, and you also run Madam Saris before. Now, the reason you want to run Madam Saris or Kaimar or somebody before Molly goes is you want to strip off their buffs so that they can't block the provoke. Um, so that's really important. Um, these skills really are not that important. Um, I gave her some you know, extra accuracy. This one's fun, 30% uh, chance of increasing turn meter by 10% when a debuff cast by this champion is removed or expires. She's almost always going to get an extra 10% after she places those provokes. Um, you, you might choose not to do that so that she doesn't wear off her stone skin as fast, but 
um i find it's you know it's good to get her to her next move if you need to um and then you know i gave her lore of steel just to get her some extra speed um actually not extra speed i'm not sure how lore of steel reacts with stone skin does it turn that 30 percent defense uh does that turn that into like 35 percent or something i'm not sure um but i've got her in laura steel because before i had like speed gear on her and stuff this one literally does not matter um provoke it says it will not extend provoke but this one also doesn't matter and i wanted to get her down to get the extra accuracy uh, from eagle eye so um, eagle eye on your debuffer is almost always what you're going to go with so then i just kind of went down the defense tree um I took this one, Cycle of Magic, only so that I could get two Lasting Gifts to extend that Reflect Damage. Honestly, I don't think that's the right way to go. I should have gone with Evil Eye. Um, when it comes to Arena, Evil Eye is just a really good skill. Um, you can you know, decrease the target's turn meter when you hit them with a single target skill. I would have really liked to have had that in the Arena today. Um, I just wasn't thinking clearly. I should have picked that one. It's more important than Lasting Gifts, which I'm probably not going to farm anyway. So, um, yeah, I would definitely go with that one. Other than that, none of them are really that important. She doesn't really need that counterattack. So, basically, the defense tree doesn't matter that much. There's a few good things on here. Um, you know, decreased damage received from AoE attacks. It's Arena. Might as well take it. Um, this one here, 50% chance to remove one random debuff when this champion, uh, when they lose 25% of their HP or more from a single enemy skill. So that one is probably the best arena skill, um, at least arena defense skill. So you saw how she could work in, uh, Doom Tower. Uh, it's the same way in dungeons as well, of course, um, even easier in dungeons, and then you could see, I mean, really everywhere, Ice Golem, she would prevent them from putting that Reflect Damage up. So if you have Molly or you have this guy, Gnarlhorn, check this out. Places Provoke on all enemies for one turn. He doesn't have to hit them. You know, again, it's not going to be two turns with him ever. And all he puts on himself is a little d increased defense. So Stone Skin instead turns him into a completely different champion. Definitely a new champion now when he wears that. Um, I stopped paying attention to the uh, to the provoke champs when like Prundar came in the game. There's so many of them. You're going to be able to definitely find champions to use this with. Um, Stone skin with provoke is very OP, especially in the dungeons, um, and could be pretty OP in arena as well as we saw. So, so anyway, I'm the Clam Boss. Thank you for watching my video. I hope it helped you out. And until next time. It's just you, me, and the odds. We stuck together, we two peas in a pod. Get out the bad hand, I'm there seizing the cards. We'll never be separated till we see in the gods. We've been low together, high forever. Long as we go together, we'll die we'll never. Be a light, couldn't let the darkness try you ever. Truth in my word, you I lie to never.